I'm sorry, I'm just kind of fangirling over you right now. <laughs> I did. I and totally my jaw did. dropped. I was like, what is this? I don't understand. Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast, where liking what you like is never a bad thing. Here's your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast. I'm your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Today, I've got something a little different going on than the other shows that I've been recording. Just to give you a little background on how I've put the show together, I'm doing it in batches. Shh. Don't tell anybody, but I've been putting this all week long. I've been recording different episodes and I'm going to basically drop like a mini season. So by the time you hear that, you're going to see a couple of different options for you to listen to. And so there's not really an episodic order exactly, but I'm sure you will agree because Diane and I already discussed this and we've decided this is going to be the best one. So <laughs> I'm glad you're here. <laughs> So we've been recording all week. Uh, I have Game of Thrones, I have Marvel, and I have Veronica Mars. It's all there. Please go listen to those after you listen to this one, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so how is this different? This one isn't about one specific show or fandom. It's about well, being a fangirl and what that means to one of the biggest fangirls I know. Today's guest is Diane Watkins, who has been fangirling uh, from birth. <laughs> That's pretty accurate, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, her mom, we're going to talk about her mom a little bit too, because her mom was the OG fangirl. And her daughters, their teens, they are kind of growing up, spotting those famous people left and right. Like the apple does not far, <laughs> fall from the trees here, right? It's super cool. And I just adore their family. And so I asked Diane to come on and talk about how fangirling runs in the family. Everyone, meet Diane. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to be here, Patty. And that's an honor to be called, you know, your favorite fangirl. I mean, I'll take it. Oh, I'll my, take it. Yeah, no, no you, 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 totally, you totally are. And uh, we'll get to how we met and how my story of how I fangirled Diane, because I actually did. <laughs> I did. You that remember is true. That? <laughs> that is true. You said the word. That may have been the first time I actually heard the word fangirl and <laughs> took it in right then. <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, that works. Okay. Um, I like it. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, Diane. What do you want the people to know about you? And if we can find you on social media, you can go ahead and throw uh, those channels out there as well. My name is Diane Watkins, and I'm a happily married mom of two daughters. Um, we got one that just finished her freshman year in college. So I've kind of got older kids, and then our youngest is about to finish her freshman year in high school. So that's kind of where we are family-wise. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm a preschool teacher, yeah. <laughs> so I get my baby fix every two days a week. I get to hug the little babies and give them back to their moms. So I'm practicing for grandkids one day. I um, love to travel, <laughs> and I think we're going to talk about all the other things I love as we go through this today. Um, you can find me at Beham Blonde, which is B-H-A-M-B-L-O-N-D-E on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and I'm Diane Watkins on YouTube. And YouTube is where you'll find a lot of my fangirl videos. So if you're a fan of any of the things we're going to talk about, my YouTube is chock full of all that. So, Oh, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> full of it. Diane's, Diane's kind of crazy. Okay, so... <laughs> now, Diane and I met, and when you guys start listening to this podcast, you're going to pick up this familiar, I, I might as well just put it in the show notes because it's basically everyone. We met through the internet over a love of Disney. Disney. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all, all, all roads go back to Disney, which is, you know, Disney kind of owns the world right now. Did you guys see how Hulu, they Oh have my goodness, we saw that Hulu yesterday. And, yeah, they're just adding on, man, they're adding on, but. All right. So this was all during the Disney Parks Moms Panel search where I met Diane and I just met her online and through. And I think it was actually through Twitter. <clears throat> a lot mm -hmm. of this was through Twitter. And I just fell in love with her personality and her love of life. And she was great. And so <laughs> my fangirl Diane moment, she <laughs> she made the Disney Moms, uh, the Disney Parks Moms Panel that gosh, it, it was what, two, two months? No, you, it was it was in May because it was the 24 hour it was the, the 24 right. hour day that they were doing at Walt Disney World. And so you had been mm -hmm. on the panel for a good five months, but I had never, never met you in person. And I turned around and we were all in line at rope drop <laughs> to go in and start this crazy 24 hour day. And there is Diane Watkins. <laughs> Ta da! 
I'm very, I'm kind of easily recognizable because I have these crazy, like, straight bangs and straight hair. So, she, and she goes, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of fangirling over you right now. <laughs> I did. I and totally my did. jaw dropped. I was like, what is this? I don't understand. I'm being fangirled right now. I loved it. She turned around and she was like, oh. Are you Diane from the Disney Parks Moms panel? <laughs> and nobody ne- really knows us as people. You know, they know it exists, but to be recognized. And she goes, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of fangirling over you right now. <laughs> I did. I and totally my did. jaw dropped. I was like, what is this? I don't understand. I'm being fangirled right now. I loved it. I loved it. And then that's where it all just blossomed. <laughs> yeah. And then we became fast friends and this besties is, ever since. That's right. And this is how, you know, we, we ended up going on a cruise together and I'm using air quotes here. We've run half marathons we've together. We've run half marathons together. <laughs> and my absolutely favorite, um, we cheered the Run Disney Marathon a couple of times together. And yes. Diane, I've got some epic Diane stories to go along with that. Oh, great. Anybody that's familiar. <laughs> Anyone that's familiar with Ren Disney, once I start explaining Diane and and who she is, you're going to go, oh, that's, oh, she's the one. Yes, that girl. she's the one guy. <laughs> that girl. So since the topic is fangirls, Diane, yes. I am giving you the chance to define it for us. What do you consider a fangirl? How would you describe it? Okay, so when I knew we were going to be doing this, I actually looked up the definition to see what other people think fangirls are. And so I found... One definition said a female fan, especially one who is obsessive about comics, movies, music, or science fiction. And then another one said a girl or woman who is an extremely or overly enthusiastic fan of someone or something. Now, I like that one better because, yes, overly enthusiastic totally describes it. Sounds Um, about right. And and what I say, I say (laughs) a fangirl is just that, just a fan, a fan of the joy and the entertainment value from what? A, an entertainer, a person, a movie, a uh, music performer, what they bring to your life. You're just a total fan of that. And that's your happy place is being in that place that brings you joy, watching that person that entertains you. So that is my definition of a fangirl. I love it. I, I absolutely, <laughs> I agree with you and I love it. And, you know, I think something else that's important about being a fangirl is finding that community and finding fellow people who True. embrace that joy with you because it just it just adds to it, which is, you know, kind of what I'm hoping to do here is to bring the fangirls together so we can talk. Uh, it's such a some of these some of these topics mm-hmm. are very male centric. Like when we start talking about Marvel and um Star Wars and things like that. And I think that women sometimes feel like they, they get stereotyped as like the ditzy blonde, goofy You're a girl. Fan girl. Just, yeah. <laughs> well, we do do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We do do that. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to say I don't have my moments where I've squeed because I do squeed. However, however, I think it's okay, mm-hmm. and I think it's okay to like what we like. You know, be who we want to be, and it's That's important true. to find those same people who like the same things. So we're all just mm-hmm. happier this way when we find that joy and we embrace it. So. So that's that's where I go with the whole fangirl definition. Now, this is super, super important. And I think I need you to clarify because I know yes. that people have said this to you. I've seen it on your Facebook page where people were like, uh, stalker much? Okay, that is Explain my pet peeve. That is my pet <laughs> peeve. Because somebody will go, yeah, I'll say, oh, I'm going to see this concert again, you know, because I'll say I see multiple concerts by the same person. And they'll say, wow, stalker much? Oh, you're such a stalker. And you know, let's let's talk about being a stalker. Okay, a stalker is somebody who's going to this person's house and they're waiting outside or they, there's no boundaries. It's the girl that jumps on stage at the concert. Right. That's that's stalker right. mode. Don't be that girl. No. Don't be the one that screams in somebody's face, you know, because these people that are entertaining you are human beings and they have families just like everybody else. And they're just they're doing their job. And I'm a fangirl of what they do. I'm not a fangirl of I want to be sitting in your kitchen when you get home. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> crap. You know, I mean, that's insane. Exactly. Yeah, we, we definitely these people, are not going to that level on no guilt mm, fangirls. No. That's not what this means. <laughs> no, that is not a fangirl. That is a criminal. <laughs> and I'm not interested in being a criminal. I'm a rule follower to the T. I'm a rule follower. Now, I'm going to find out the best way to make that rule work for me, but I'm a rule follower. So I just, you know, I don't like when people say stalker, that word just drives me crazy. I'm like, I'm not a stalker just because I've gone to the concert 88 times. (laughs) I'm just, 
you know, I'm, I'm giving them paying, I'm giving them their money to, I'm giving them my money to entertain me. So to entertain yes. me. Exactly. No, that's not soccer. No. I, I agree with you. Uh, yeah. I just, I've seen that so many times and I'm like, but that's not what this is. No. That's not what this is. No. And it really does. I, I, it gets annoying to see it over and over and over again. And I'm sure, you know, every time you drop one of your famous selfies, <laughs> you probably hear that again. Yes. So, <laughs> yes, <I do>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, I'd love to hear a little bit about, about your fandoms. And, and I know because Diane likes a lot of things. <laughs> She's like me. We, we we like a lot of stuff. There's probably a string of things that you love out there. But give us, like, say, the top five things that you could talk about, you know, for an hour. You could stand up and give a speech about <laughs> and okay. and you know you know your stuff and nobody would be able to second guess what you had to say. Like what are your what are your things that you're really excited about? Okay, my things. Let's see. A top five, I would have to say, well, if you know me, people that know me are already thinking it in their head. Number one is gonna be Justin <laughs> Timberlake. <laughs> so Justin Timberlake, number one. Um Disney, all all about Disney. The Bachelor Nation. I do watch a lot of Bachelorette and Bachelor. I've been watching it since season one. I do have a picture with Trista Sutter. I cannot find it anywhere. Trista Wren. Ah! Trista Wren Sutter. Um, my mom and I actually met her at the mall here in town. So I do have a picture with her somewhere. It started from season one. Um, I'm going to go back to my original, my first fangirl when I was a fangirl of Sean Cassidy when I was a kid. <laughs> And I have a little story where that came full circle a few years ago. So Sean Cassie, I have to put him on that list. I'm going to put Prince on the list because okay. there are a lot of, of fangirl print stories. And I'm going to have to throw in for my mom, Young and the Restless, because even though I've kind of dropped off the Young and the Restless band, I watched that show since childhood with my mom. And we've been to like fan conventions and all that kind of stuff and met all the people. So <laughs> got to give a shout awesome. out to Young and the Restless. So. And, and I gotta, I gotta throw in, um, a new fan girl of Marvel Yay! and that is thanks. Yes, I know. I know. I feel I had so much FOMO because being friends with you and our other friend, Tanya Lamb, you all, you love Marvel and you would wear these cute t-shirts that made no sense to me. And you would talk <laughs> about things that made no sense to me. And you would get excited when there was a new premiere of a Marvel movie. And I was like, I got to get in on this. You know, I got to figure out what's going out. So I call y'all my Marvel godmothers. And, um, <laughs> I love that. I love that. Y'all got me. So over Christmas break, I was, you, you had put out a list of all the Marvel movies to watch in order to get ready for Captain Marvel. And so yep. I started watching all those to lead up to Captain Marvel. And then I was ready for in game. So I got to enjoy it just like everybody else did with investment in the characters. And I, I actually watched all the movies twice. So I watched 42 movies to get ready, to get ready for Endgame. I love it. You've just made my day. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. my favorite story. And Diane was texting us every time she'd get to a new movie. And she, <laughs> and she was popping in with updates on who she liked and what was going on. And it was it was awesome to just sit there and watch our friend who we, who, who again, we recognize as this big fangirl, but she was getting into something that we were totally into. It was, it was the coolest. So we're so excited to have you as part of our little Marvel family. Yay, <laughs> I'm so excited to be part of it. <laughs> Since I know a little bit about you and your family. So I, I know the basic answer here, but tell me, tell me who is responsible for this. How did you get the way you are when it comes to your fandoms? How did I get this way? I would say that I hit every branch falling out of the family tree from my mom. Um, she growing up was a, a huge movie fan. And I remember she told us over and over, she would tell us stories about, um, going to the walking to the movie theater and having a qu one quarter Let's think about this now in 2019. <laughs> she would have a quarter and she could go see the movie, get a drink, get a popcorn oh, and great. get a candy <laughs> for, a quarter. for a quarter. Yeah, for a quarter. So I guess, you know, it was, I don't know. I don't know how all that worked out and what cost what, but for one quarter she could do all those things. And she just loved actors and everybody on the big screen. Yeah. You know, I remember her talking about <laughs> Rock Hudson and Tab Hunter and going to see Gone with the Wind in the theater and just all these movies. And so she, that's kind of how hers started. She got me started watching movies as a child and really getting into it. And I just kind of hit every branch on the tree coming out and followed my favorite finger on my mom. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. And what did your what what were some of your mom's like big passions? Obviously, Young and the Restless. You've touched on that, but what else did she really like? Young and the Restless. Well, she was a fangirl of Burt Parks. I don't even know if you know who that is. He was the original host yeah, of Miss America. She loved Burt Parks. She actually went to see him host a game show. Anytime he was anywhere, she would try and go see him. She loved Burt Parks. Um, Tom Jones. Uh, of course. Of course. It's not unusual <laughs> to be loved by an uh, I can do Tom Jones good today because I've had a cold. So I'm a, I'm a, I sound like a fan man today. So sorry about that. I'm over here doing my Carlton. <laughs> doing your Carlton. But yeah, Tom Jones. She loved Tom Jones. I think she had, I found in her, she has a scrapbook of all these things. Oh, um, man. I found That's at least treasure. nine Tom Jones tickets that she had gone oh, to wow. see him nine times. Um, she had, you know, the handkerchief she'd throw on stage, wiped with his sweat. You know, my mom passed away two years ago. So going through her house was like going through a movie museum with all her mm, movie relics, awesome. boxes of movie magazines, boxes of handkerchiefs with Tom Jones sweat on them with the date written on there where she saw him and everything. I mean, <laughs> it was craziness and very organized. So it was easy and fun to go through all those things. Um, it made her... It made it made that job a little easier because it was like an adventure, oh, I love that. <laughs> you know, seeing what we would find. Definitely, definitely. When Tom Jones started getting old, now here's what she would do: when they started getting old, she would like retire. When oh, Tom Jones is too old for me. I like Rod Stewart now, so she moved on. Yeah, Rod Stewart. <laughs> so she liked him for a while, and then her last one that I can remember was Taylor Hicks of all people. Of all people, Taylor. <clears throat> she well, loved him. All right, all right. <laughs> Your mom, your mom, your mom is definitely this special kind of fangirl. I think one that we all aspire to be like that. I'm trying to think, uh, you know, I've got a few, especially in this day and age, like all my special fangirl moments that I have are all digital now that I think about it. I do have one when I was in seventh grade, sixth grade, something or somewhere around then I went to one of my friends, um, dance recitals and Henry Thomas, the actor, from ET. Uh, he was from ET. Yeah. The ET actor, he, he lived in San Antonio. This is when I lived in San Antonio and apparently his cousin went to the same dance studio. And so he was there and that was like my first, Oh, it's a celebrity. <laughs> it's ET. It's Henry Thomas. And he had just filmed uh, that movie. I think it was called cloak and dagger. And uh-huh. it, was, it was kind of a, it was kind of a cool story for a kid of that age. I was kind of into it. And I just remember going over and getting his signature. I still have that, which is hilarious that I kept it all this time. And it's a random, it's not like <laughs> I was a huge Henry Thomas fan girl, but but there, but, he, but there was. he was. I've Correct. seen him on the big screen, and yes, here and that he was is my in first real life. Of, wow! <laughs> but it's almost kind of like what you said back to being stalkerish and whatever. He was really just this kid that was forced to come and see his little his little cousin's <laughs> dance recital. You know, he was just a normal person. And and when I went up to him, I was like, "Can I get your autograph?" He just right. kind of embarrassed, like, "Are you really?" Okay, yeah, I'll sign it. I mean, you know, he's he was a pro and he signed it, but I could tell that he was like, I'm just here because my mom made me come. You know, <laughs> it was one of those oh. one of those things. But that's that's the memories you have from back exactly. then are autographs. I have an autograph from from Scott ah. Bayo because he was yes, Chachi, had a little Chachi. crush on him. <laughs> <laughs> Chachi. And um, he was at World of Wheels in Birmingham. It was like an auto show. And so my dad, of course, had made us all go to the World of Wheels together. And I was like, oh, Scott Bayo. So I got in line and I had my little pink Holly Hobby <laughs> autograph book and I got up there and he signed it. And I said, would you kiss me on the cheek? I mean, I was probably seven asking Scott Bayo. So I always tell people that Scott Bayo was my first kiss because he kissed me on the cheek. So. Oh, okay. And I still have it on pink paper. I still have it. This is like my peak. That's like peak fangirl. Scott Bayo kissing you on the cheek. That's your first kiss. I love it. I uh-huh. love it. I love it. That was it. That's where it all started. <laughs> all right. So your daughters, obviously, they spent a lot of time with you and your mom um, growing up and seeing all of this. What what kind of fangirl tendencies do they have? And and you don't have to go into like massive details because I want to protect their privacy, but oh, I, yeah. I know that they're into stuff too. And I just think it's kind of cool to have these like three generations of fangirls just carrying on the tradition. <laughs> carrying on. Um, well, they're, they're a little different. Like Katie is my, my oldest, my college freshman. She's more of a movie fangirl. Now she does like concerts, but we have very different musical tastes and she doesn't care about meeting them. She just wants to go to the concert, you know, but she now you'll be so proud. 
guess who's watching the Marvel movies with me? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're on our third run. I think we finished, we finished Dr. Strange last night. So That's awesome. We're getting there. So we're getting there. Cause she knew that I saw Endgame and how awesome it was. And she wanted to feel the way I felt when I saw it. So she was like, we're trying to catch up and watch them all again. So oh, anyway, yay. But she's my movie fan girl. Like, and she loves musical theater and those kind of things. Like she got all that from me, like wanting to do that. My youngest now, serious fangirl. She is a serious fangirl. She started with One Direction. Liam. <laughs> she singled out Liam in One Direction. She had a big um, stand up, a cardboard stand up of him in her bedroom for a long time that she got for her birthday and things like that. And then <laughs> in fifth grade, she moved to this little singer named Jake Miller. Okay, he, has, okay. he has a couple songs on the radio right now. So I don't know if anybody's ever heard of him, but she is a serious Jake Miller fangirl. Met her best friend through the fandom. Like we take vacations with this other fan. Now we're going to Disney with them next month. And she <laughs> met this friend through Jake Miller. And we found out we have a love of Disney also. So we kind of work all that together. We're going to see Jake Miller in Orlando while we're at Disney. So oh my it all gosh, comes, it the all circle comes, yes, back circle to comes around. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't but Disney I've own them, Jake Miller? I think D- Disney I think. probably owns Jake Miller. If they own Sony, <laughs> then they own Jake Miller. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I have taught them, you know, the skills of like, you know, get there early. If you want to go to go get the best spot, you got to get there early. If you think, people are going to be there at 5 30 you're going to be there at 2 30 front row is always better if you're going to go to a show front row is always better because you have a totally different experience and befriend other fans those are those are the things that kendall has kind of taken from me like she's a she's a front row girl i love it i love it all right (laughs) so we're gonna speaking of front row because this is you went on quite a run um, <laughs> <laughs> over this past year with Justin. Uh, oh, Justin. Every every time I, I looked on Facebook, there was Diane in the front row, people, of a Justin Timberlake <laughs> concert. Yet another one. Uh, <laughs> so she, she, so she, poor she, now. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, but you practice what you preach. You, you, know, right. you know what you want, you know what you like, and you're going to do it. So how did the JT fandom start? Because obviously... I mean, we can all we all know the story of Justin Timberlake and how he was a Mouseketeer. So I don't know if if mm-hmm. is that where your Disney met Justin? And- I don't know. It's all connected, right? Isn't it? I mean, it's it's just <laughs> kind of crazy. Now, see, when he was a Mouseketeer, I think I was in college, so like I would have thought that was goofy. So I probably uh-huh. could, I probably would not have. I don't remember him as a Mouseketeer. Like I okay. I first remember him in NSYNC. And I liked their music and everything, but it was when I started seeing them on MTV and I was like, hmm. And I mean, I'm an older fan girl. So I was not, you know, the teeny bopper Justin fan. I was like a mid twenties Justin fan. And so I just remember on the MTV awards, I think it was in 2000, it might've been 1999. And they, there was, there were two shows that year. There were the video awards and the music awards and music awards. They came out and I don't know if you'll remember this performance, but they did bye, bye, bye. And they had the big TVs in front of their heads. Do you remember that? Yep. And they would come out to the side and then go back behind the TV and just the showmanship of it. I was like, okay, I'm in, I'm, I'm full throttle. I like this. And that was when I first zoomed in on JT and I was, and he's the cutest. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and he's the best dancer and he's the best singer. And so I think that's where it all started when I started really watching their videos on MTV and like seeing their live performances. And I was like, okay, I like this. And then went to three in sync concerts, different tours. And then it was, then I was hooked. And then you were hooked. I, uh, so I was in my early twenties when in um, sync was, was big and when bye, bye, bye came out. And I just remember I, I, I was late to the boy bands myself because the same same idea in my head. I was like, ah, boy bands. Like, I'm way too much over that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was a summer trip. We went to – a friend and I went to Myrtle Beach, and she had this – hot little yellow convertible Miata that we were driving around all over, all over the South in. And uh, Bye 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 came out. And I just remember us like screaming and singing the song at the top of our lungs. And we (laughs) became obsessed with NSYNC at that point. And Uh, it's funny how you picked, you, yeah, it was so good. And how you (laughs) picked out Justin, I picked out Joey Fatone. Don't ask me why he, he wasn't the best singer. He wasn't the best dancer, but there was something about Joey that I was like, 
I really like Joey. And I don't know why. <laughs> I kind of, I will say I kind of leaned towards him first. Did you? Too. Okay. 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 When they, but not, but, but that was when they were like performing on TRL and all that stuff because Justin had the weird hair going at the time. <laughs> and Chris yes. over there with the red stuff going on. And Joey looked the mo- more, I guess he looked more my age, I guess at the time. He and was so older. I kind of thought yeah. he was yeah. cute. But the, I, I just remember that that TV one, the one where they were behind the giant TVs, that's when it kind of switched to JT. And that was like hyper focused, like, <laughs> oh no, that's the one. Forget you, Joey. And I still love Joey. And let me say, over the years, I have been in the same place as Joey Fatone probably eight times and still cannot get a selfie with Joey. I call him the elusive Joey Fatone. All my friends have pictures with him. You have a picture with him. I do. I do. People will send me pictures from the race course when we're running Disney races and they're like, Oh, look, look who I met at mile three. And I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he's the elusive Joey Fatone. <laughs> <laughs> Can't, yeah. Well, I, I don't want to say I, I was stalkerish that day. <laughs> However, I will say that the day that I got my Joey Fatone uh, picture, um, I knew where he would be and mm-hmm. I knew kind of what the timing was of the event that he was at. And so I, I kind of took a page out of the Diane Watkins, you know, playbook is I made there sure I was there early. I made mm-hmm. sure I was kind of hanging around where I knew that he would walk out. And when he walked out, I said, Hey, Joey, would it be okay if I got a picture? And he was like, absolutely. Super Boom. nice guy. Yeah. And see, that's nice not guy. stalking. That's just being in the right place, right at, place the right at the right time. Right time. <laughs> I will say I felt like I was stalking, but I don't think it was. And I was very <laughs> respectful, even though inside I was like, ah, Joey, that's out. Finally, 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 finally. Now see that so. waiting for them to come out is not stalking. Going, breaking in to find them. <laughs> that is stalking. That is stalking. No, good point. Very good point. Very good point. <laughs> Speaking of selfies, you know, what cracks me up about Diane is I think anytime some something famous happens or someone's in the news or something similar, whatever, <laughs> Diane always has, she has the selfie to commemorate it. It was George Lucas's birthday the other day. <gasps> <laughs> and bam, there's her George Lucas picture. <laughs> I was like, oh, of course she has a George Lucas picture. Why wouldn't she? Because she's Diane. Okay. That was a great story though. That was okay. We were in Chicago. Why were we in Chicago? Oh, we were in Chicago for a Justin Timberlake concert. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. Um, so we were in, in Chicago for a Justin Timberlake concert and my friend Amy and I are just walking down the streets in Chicago and we crossed the street and we passed this guy. And I mean, we both just stopped dead in our tracks and we went, was that? But with it, I mean, nobody could get a word out. Now, this coming from somebody, I will admit, I am not a Star Wars person. Y'all have not roped me into that one yet. You got me with Marvel, but Star Wars, I'm still on the outskirts. Okay, so. okay. But I knew who he was, basically, because I think I had seen him on Oprah. Like, Oprah had visited his ranch or something. So, I think that's where I remembered his face from. But we looked at each other and we're like, oh my God, oh my God. And I said, I'm going in. And I just spun on my heel and I just walked up behind him. <laughs> He's just walking down the street with another guy. And I walked up behind him and just very quietly, I said, Mr. Lucas, would you mind if I get a picture? He said, if you can take it while we're walking. And I said, <laughs> no problem. I will not call any attention. I put my phone up. I took the selfie. He went, oh, you're good. I said, I know. <laughs> so I have a picture with George Lucas and it's so crazy because Star Wars people are like, oh my God, you got that picture. But I mean, you know, he was just walking the streets of Chicago. And funny that you mentioned Henry Thomas earlier because after that happened Amy and I just sat down and we were like I cannot believe we just saw George Lucas that was craziness oh my word that was crazy and as we're discussing that guess who walked past us Henry Thomas Henry freaking Thomas walked by and I went Amy oh that's the guy from ET. And I mean, we, and, but we just let him go. Like we were still in the George Lucas fog and we just let him go. He just walked right past us. So when you said Henry, Henry Thomas a minute ago, I was like, Oh my word. That totally ties into my George Lucas it does. story. I would have died. I would have absolutely died. If after we had this conversation, you were texting me a picture of you and Henry Thomas, I would have just been like, see, see, this is exactly what happens. All missed opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Understandable. Cause I think I would totally be in that George Lucas you know, fog as well. But this is the thing is that you recognize those people on the streets. I don't have that skill. That gene does not run through my body. Most people aren't paying attention. I I think that's partially it. The only time that I've, I've caught people was when I was in a place where I, I knew, um, there was a potential. I could sit on the bus next to Garth Brooks and I'd have no idea it was him. 
until <laughs> later somebody would be like, you know, that was Garth Brooks, right? And and Garth is my eldest. Garth, so, right. you know, that's like the, the crazy thing is like, I feel like I'm that out of it sometimes. <laughs> and I'm just but like you said, we're just not paying attention. So people pay attention. <laughs> people don't, people just don't notice. No, they don't. And, and it's the weirdest thing though, is when you see somebody out of place, yes. like, one of my friends on mom's panel, she just bumped into Tom Hanks at an antique store a few weeks ago. <laughs> and I mean, I would freak out if I was just at an antique store and all of a sudden you hear Woody from right. Toy Story talking right. behind you because his voice is so recognizable. And she said he was so nice and she got a picture with him and everything. But I mean, you wouldn't expect that, you know, and I, I don't remember where she was, but it was somewhere like that Tom Hanks would not right, be. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, but- so that was why George Lucas just Walking randomly in Chicago. Chicago. I think his wife is from Chicago. So I think that's probably why he was there. But it was just so random. And, and my other favorite one was David Blaine. Now, I'm not a huge David Blaine fangirl. However, when we first got married, I remember we would sit and we would watch. It was when he first started doing those uh, TV specials, right, right. you know. And I was fascinated with it. And I was like, God, I would give anything to just see his close up magic one day. That is craziness. Like, how does he do that? And he just blows my mind. And I'm just fascinated with all that. So we're sitting in Nashville, Nashville of all places at a bachelorette party at a, and we're at a table at a barbecue restaurant. And there's this, I'm right by the window. And this is right when like Gwyneth Paltrow had just won an Oscar maybe or something. And Taylor Swift was starting to get popular. Like those were the people in my head that were super famous at the moment. I said, you know, somebody famous is going to walk past this window, (laughs) like Gwyneth Paltrow or, Taylor Swift, and I'm not going to be able to get out to the street fast enough. <laughs> and so we're sitting there eating. And then all of a sudden, I, lo- I felt somebody looking at me. And I look up and David Blaine, you know how he has that creepy look? Yes. He's standing over me in the window, <laughs> gazing into my eyes. I lost my mind. I hit the window with both hands and just went, <gasps> I mean, nobody else even knew who the guy was. I <laughs> lost it. I jumped up. And I mean, he it was like, who has sent you? You have come for me, David Blaine. <laughs> I jumped up. I, ju- I walked over my friends in their chairs and left my purse, left my meal, jumped up and ran outside. And I went, David Blaine, why are you here? Why are you standing over me? What is happening? And he goes, would you like to see some magic? Oh my gosh, no way. Patty, that is crazy. Stop the madness. It was like I had summoned him and it was so weird. So sir, sure enough, he gathered us all up. We all just left all our all our food and we said, we're coming back. He walked us up to Bridgestone Arena and did magic tricks for us. And we are now on one of David Blaine's specials. Oh my gosh. Like I am now, not only have I seen it up close, we are on the special. Guys, I didn't. How weird is that? I, I didn't lie about Diane, right? <laughs> I, I, I tell no lies. I tell no lies. She just has this quality right. about her. <laughs> as soon as we sat back down at our seat and my food was cold, I, I said, Y'all, I feel like Justin Timberlake's going to walk past this window and I'm not going to be able to get outside past <laughs> I was like, If I could summon David Blaine, maybe JT's next. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. That, that didn't work as well. But <laughs> that's funny. Oh. <laughs> Craziness. That is nuts. That is nuts. <laughs> okay, so selfies. Like I said, Diane's legendary. She's got these great selfies. What are your? What, give us a little master class in how you approach them, how you make it happen. Like if somebody sees somebody that they think that they want to try to get a selfie with, what what are your tips? What do you do? Number one, remember that they're a human being. Yeah. <laughs> they're a normal person. Speak to them respectfully. It, You know, I'm not going to walk up to somebody who's sitting down. If I'm at a restaurant and I look over and I see, you know, Kevin Bacon having dinner with his family, I'm not going to walk over and go, hey, Kevin, how's your steak? Can we get a selfie? I'm not going <laughs> to interrupt somebody's moment, you know, but if I see that somebody's in a restaurant, I'm going to kind of just be outside the restaurant. So when they come out, then you could say, Hey, you know, good. I did that's I met Jane Lynch one time and Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's when I, you know, was just kind of outside the restaurant. Oh, Hey, can we get a selfie? Um, found out she was there because she was about to marry one of my childhood friends. And that was a whole nother story. What craziness, but you just have to be respectful, you know, or just say, Hey, I'm a huge fan of your work, you know, but don't run up and be crazy. Oh my God. Don't be that girl. Yeah, yeah. Just don't don't draw attention to it and make a big deal if you're not someplace that that's that 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 everybody that that's expected. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Like if you're at a fan event and everybody's there to see that person, that's, that's one, one thing. thing. But if you just happen to see somebody on the road, I was not going to call attention to hey, look, here's the director, here's the you know 
George Lucas walking exactly, through Chicago. Exactly, exactly. That would have been terrible. <laughs> Because you don't, you just don't want to be that person. Now, for Justin Timberlake, I do have my uh, profile pictures on pretty much everything or selfies with Justin Timberlake. At his concert, we got the really good seats. You know, I'm gonna if I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pay the money to get the good seats and be where I can have that good experience. And we, I saw in this show, he was very interactive in the Man of the Woods tour, and I saw where he would get selfies with people and how, kind of how it would happen. People would bring little signs to get his attention. So I watched at one show to kind of see how it went down. Okay, so I'm hearing and then we I'm went, hearing that you need to do your homework if you're do your homework. Do your homework. Be prepared. Yes. Okay, so go on. Be prepared. Go on. If it's somewhere where you can bring a sign to call attention, you know, if it's if it is like if you're at a red carpet, if you're at somewhere where you know those people are gonna be, you have to have a sign to get their attention. So my husband and I went back to the JT concert and sat in the same area. And I said, John, I need you to hold a sign for me. And he said, I'm not holding a sign up at a Justin Timberlake concert. I said, I promise it's going to work. So I made him a sign that said, um, husband of the year, if this sign gives my wife a selfie. And then I put hashtag help a brother out. I love it. Because JT, he's a married guy and he he gets it. And he, I mean, he's he knows being a husband, you want to make the wife happy. You know, and here's this. You know, salt and pepper haired gentleman at his concert, obviously, because his wife has dragged him there, you know, and he going to give him the respect. So he comes over during one of the first songs and he looked at John, he saw the sign. He goes, I got you, man. I got you. (laughs) That's awesome. Awesome. I think my soul left my body. (laughs) I went, did he just say, I got you? Did he just say, I got you? Is it, is it going to happen? Well, he didn't come back for the selfie. I knew when he did the selfies were near the end of the Uh concert. uh So I had to wait the whole concert (laughs) knowing he was coming over to us. So the funny thing, he was ending the song before (laughs) the selfie song and he was ending the song and in the dark he comes up and I have it on video. He comes over to us. He goes, get your camera ready. Get your camera ready. Yes. <laughs> it's like, he thinks the old guy doesn't know how to work the camera. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so, Cause he, you put it, you had to put it on you know, flip and it had to be looking at him and he would take it and then he'll hold it up and take the picture. So sure enough, he starts singing supplies. He dances over the thing. It comes right straight to us, reaches down, takes my phone, and then I pr- proceeded to profess my love to him <laughs> while sitting next to him. Of course. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love you so much, Justin. And John's just laughing. You know, he's a very good sport about it. That's another <laughs> tip. Have a husband that's a good sport. I mean, he knows I'm not going, I don't I don't really have a chance with Justin Timberlake. <laughs> You're not leaving John for Justin. John's, I'm not leaving John for Justin. John's so, secure you know. in the relationship and realizes that. Yes. And just like goes along. For, but did, didn't, didn't Justin uh, <laughs> take a picture with John too? No? Did I make that up? No. Well, he's just, he's in, in the, the picture. The video. Oh, okay. oh, he's in the video. He's in okay, the video. Okay. I think he gave him a, a little high five after that, he handed my that phone was back. What I it think was. he liked. That was what it was. Yeah. That was, that was awesome. That was awesome. I loved it. And then I proceeded to just fall over <laughs> onto the stranger girl next to me and start sobbing. So it was a beautiful <laughs> thing. It was lovely. <laughs> but that's not your only JT photo. Like you have another <laughs> one of him from, and this was like at a golf for, course, right? Yes. That was. You go to where they are, Patty. You got to go where they are. (laughs) So Justin had a golf tournament. It was the Shriners Hospital for Children golf tournament that he sponsored, and it was in Las Vegas. So we had it one year, and when I saw it, he had it on the Ellen Show. It was a thing, and I said, I'm going to that next year. So it happened to be around our anniversary weekend, and I said, you know, I don't want for our anniversary. I just really want to go to Las Vegas. And John was like, okay. So we planned the whole thing, and then last minute, John couldn't go. And so he ended up letting two of my friends have the plane tickets and flew them out there to be with me. And so we went and I volunteered at the golf tournament. Yes, I did. <laughs> so I have all the hats and merch and all the, sh- the shirts and everything that say Justin Timberlake on them because we volunteered. <laughs> and then after it was over, we had asked during the day, you know, hey, where's he going to be? Is he going to sign autographs? You know, you got to find out and get your intel of where he's going to be. So we followed him around the course and he didn't really interact with anybody. But then we went to where they said he was going to be. And sure enough, he came down the line and I got my selfie and it was horrible. The oh. first picture was awful. I wasn't yeah. smiling. He had a weird look. And my friend, I looked at her and she goes, Diane, I said, is it great? Is it so great? Tears in my eyes. She goes, it's not good. <laughs> I went, oh my gosh. So we ran down the line and got back in line. And so the funniest thing is in my picture with Justin Timberlake from the golf tournament, his bodyguard is behind him giving us a look like, really, ladies? (laughs) (laughs) This is number two for you. So, yes, I actually have two pictures with him from that day, but it was so much fun. 
it was so much fun. I also met um, Chris from NSYNC on the golf course that day. He was playing. And Carlton. Uh, and Carlton. <laughs> yeah, and Carlton was there. <laughs> oh, Good my stuff. gosh. Yeah. No, Diane, <laughs> you leave a great life. Like, I just love it. I love the stories. I love the history behind it. I love how you're passing it on to your daughters. And someday you are going to be out there taking your granddaughters to some concert that they're super excited and passionate about. And you're going to teach them all the tricks. I just know it's going to happen. I can't wait to see those pictures. It'll be Justin Timberlake. He'll still be performing. <laughs> He probably will be. He probably will be. <laughs> but I have, I have this one question. Why can't you find Chris Evans for me at Disney World? <gasps> we have been at Disney World with Chris Evans I know. multiple times, but your, your, your celeb radar hasn't gone off. And I've been super disappointed mm. in that. So we need to make that happen sometime. This is my request, my friendship request. Okay. <laughs> Is we need we need we need more intel on we that. Do. We need as long as we do ahead of time he was gonna that, be there. Like for an event. Yeah, we can make know, it work. I know, I know. The key at Disney is watch for the plaids. The plaids, yep, yep. Every time I see them, I, I go, okay, are they rich or are they mm-hmm. famous? Rich or are they rich famous? or famous? That's the game we play. And Katie, my eldest daughter, she is the best. She'll go plaid, plaid. <laughs> and so then we play the rich or famous game. You look at them, okay, rich or famous. And we found a couple of ri- couple of mostly rich people we don't recognize, but then we did find the property brothers. Oh, that's fun. That's we found the fine. property brothers one day with with a plaid, yeah, and so, and a Disney Channel Sabrina Carpenter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I was at Disneyland once and I saw a plaid, and I whip my head around and I'm studying and I'm studying and I'm like, no, 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 <gasps> Seth Green, and he was just you know having a conversation, and you could hear his voice because he also has a pretty distinctive voice, and you could hear his voice, but he had a baseball cap on and was kind of in the you know the sunglasses baseball cap trying to hide. I'm like, dude. <laughs> we know who you are. Like <laughs> you're, you're, you're kind of short, but <laughs> we know who you are, Seth. You can't, you can't like blend in, especially not when you're walking <laughs> with a plaid and you're talking. If you kept your mouth shut, you probably could have gotten away with it. <laughs> you can't hide. And I don't like to interrupt people when they're with plaids, mm-hmm. but if they're just kind of hanging out, like um, one time we were walking past um, the speedway there in Tomorrowland, and. I look over and I saw Warwick Davis and I was like, Hmm. <laughs> and he was with a plaid, but the plaid was like talking to his family and stuff. And he was just sitting there and I walked in, I walked over and I just sat down right next to him. I said, do you mind if we get a selfie real quick? Cause he was there when they used to have star Wars. Yep, weekends. Yep. And he goes, sure. And he just gave a big smile and I said, thank you so much. And I was on my way. Like I didn't like call attention to him right. or anything like that. Just, Hey, there he is. Pop in, get the selfie, move on. My kids didn't even know I stopped. <laughs> they were already at the ice cream. St- they were over anti gravities, and then I walked up. They were like, "Where were you?" And I said, "Oh, I was just getting a selfie with the Star Wars, you know, guy. <laughs> Harry Potter, Star Wars, you know, you know no big deal." You know, mom, mom, just doing her mom thing. You know, the usual. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, it, anyway, I love spotting people just in the wild of Disney. It's fun. It, it, it is fun. I'm just so bad at it, and that's why I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to make a Disney trip. We need, well, we need to do that anyway. We'll talk about that later. But we need a Disney trip uh, where I can go with Diane and we can find it because they are, they go to, just like you said, they're like regular people, just like the rest of us. All roads lead to Mm -hmm. Disney. Disney's a great place if you ever, you know, want a fangirl or or find somebody, but use Diane's tips that she said, you know, remember, be respectful. Don't make a big thing out of it, especially if they're on vacation with their family, you know, like gauge your moments. Cause that's, you know, what, that's one of the big things too is, I'm not going to interrupt somebody when they're eating. I'm not going to, um, if they're with their kids, you know, I'm not going to go up and be like, hi, excuse me. I know you're parenting right now, but. <laughs> right. Uh, that was Gavin Rossdale. At the, that was at our mall a few months ago. And Gavin Rossdale, I will tell you, I don't approve of what he did to, to Gwen Stefani, but the man is gorgeous. <laughs> and I saw him in a shoe store at the mall and I looked over, but he was with all the kids. Like he had all the little Zuma and all the, you know, you know, Kingston, their little family and he was shopping with his kids. So I saw his manager and I asked his manager, I said, Hey, do you think he would in- be interested in, you know, getting a picture? He said, well, just let him shop and we leave the store, but we had somewhere to be. Yeah. So I had to, I had to let it go. But I will always remember making eye contact with Gavin Rossdale and he saw in my eyes, oh, she knows who I am. <laughs> I've been spotted. <laughs> he kind of stood out in Birmingham, Alabama with his like, you know, flannel tied around his waist and his ripped up jeans and his like $5,000 boots. That, you know, would, I was like, oh. that would make one stand out, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but judge your moments. I did not go up to him because he was with his kids. You just don't. Right. You don't do that. Right. He's a human. It, it, well, exa- <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, I wanted to actually touch on real quick before we go bachelor bachelorette 
<laughs> so you have actually a connection with the latest bachelorette in a kind yes. of funny way. <laughs> Not a huge connection, but you know, she's from Alabama. So of course there's yep. that connection, but um, that being said, I'm from Alabama. I'm not for Alabama. So I'm having to let it slide. <laughs> let's make this very clear. Yeah, I'm having to yeah, let it slide that she keeps here. saying RT, which we consider curse words in our house. I will whisper it. Roll Tide. <laughs> she keeps saying that over and over. And I said, I'm going to have to let it slide because she's going to say it every five seconds because we're huge Auburn Tiger fans, which is their biggest rival. So, um, but yes, <laughs> we, we actually met her. We're supporters of a local charity here and um, they have a race in our hometown every year. And it's called um, open hands, overflowing hearts. They raise money to end childhood cancer. And so we went to cheer last year and I brought along one of my race signs. It's a giant Steve Harvey face. And I had another sign that said survey says you're awesome or something like that. So I had my big Steve Harvey sign and they load all the cheerleaders to take us out on the race course into this, the back of this truck. And so I hop on this truck, it's freezing cold. I'm like have on a big old sweatshirt and scarf, you know, just rolled out of bed. And I look over and here's this beauty queen hops on looking like a million bucks <laughs> with a sash and a crown. And I was like, well, <laughs> hi, you know, obviously you're, you know, a, a pageant winner, you know, you know, who do you represent? She goes, I'm Miss Alabama USA. My name's Hannah. And I was like, Oh, Hey, nice to meet you. I said, well, when's the, when's Miss USA? Oh, it's coming up in a few months. I said, well, let's get a picture. So when you win, I can say, Whoa, I met her back when, you know, she was just Miss Alabama <laughs> and she was so cute and so sweet. And then I looked down and she's got a Steve Harvey sign. And I was like, awesome. yes, was like <laughs> great minds think alike. And so she was super sweet and just enjoyed meeting her and everything. And it was just funny that we got a picture. Cause I would never, I mean, that was just random. Cause she's, you know, just a, pageant winner or whatever. But anyway, and so then when she got on the bachelorette, we were like, or on the bachelor, we were like, we know her. That's so funny. And then she got picked to be the bachelorette. So now we're having like viewing parties. We've got big posters made and we like X'd all the bachelors out with a big red Sharpie (laughs) the other night. Like we went all in. We had, uh, my daughter was like, we got to get roses. So we had like a fresh rose (laughs) next to the sign. And like with such geeks, we have brackets printed out. We're we're geeking it out. And and guys, guys, Diane just does this at home. That's just just her home life. (laughs) This is normal. (laughs) This is is just normal every day hanging out at the Watkins. I mean, this is... Um, My kids think it's completely normal. Like Katie's like, we're doing like special snacks and stuff, right? So we had like sparkling (laughs) non-alcoholic rosé for the kids, you know, and we had like strawberries dipped in chocolate and Katie got all like dressed in her little outfit that like matched the decor. I mean, it was, it was good stuff. Like that's just make your life fun. You know, don't be boring. Just enjoy Absolutely. your life. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. I love it. So the Steve Harvey sign, this is actually a good segue back to what I was, I mentioned earlier. So if I have anybody on here that's listening that does the run Disney races and just a real quick touch on that, what that means. If you're like, what is a run Disney race? Uh, Walt Disney world holds four races a year, four race weekends a year, and you can come down and you can run different levels, uh, 5K up to a full marathon. And Diane uh, and I have run quite a few of them, but um, the most fun has actually been when we choose not to run (laughs) and we decide to cheer instead. And so (laughs) what happens is we put Diane on sign duty Diane is so creative and plus she knows all the memes because she's a fangirl of all things and she knows all the pop culture references and she comes up with these excellent, excellent race signs out of these memes. And I remember that that one year, um, it was in December, we were talking about race signs. We got to start getting ready for the the marathon <laughs> that was coming up in early January. And you're like, I got nothing, guys. I got nothing. I, I, I'm, I'm struggling to come up with something clever. And then and lo and behold, <laughs> what happened? New Year's <laughs> Eve. Thank you, Mariah Carey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just texted our group message on New Year's Eve after Mariah Carey just completely destroyed her New Year's Eve performance. And I was like, y'all... Mariah just handed me some signs on a silver platter. <laughs> and everybody <laughs> so stopped. We- everybody on the race course, they were dying because we had the Mariah Carey sign. <laughs> and it said, it was a big picture of Mariah from that performance, like in the outfit, you know, just obviously you knew it had just happened like a few days before. And it said, run like your Mariah's sound guy on New Year's Because <laughs> you know she was ready to kill him when it was over. <laughs> oh, oh, for sure, for sure. It was it was hilarious. That, that was one of my favorites this 
last marathon weekend, Diane was not there, but I channeled my inner Diane and I had the Fiji water girl sign. Yes, that was awesome. You see, it's so much every now and then pop culture just throws you a bone. <laughs> and so I had a, a Fiji water girl sign that said, are you thirsty? Or I am too, or something like that. I can't remember what I, what I put on it, but people stopped and they were dying and they said, oh, are you the meme girl? Are you the meme girl? I've been looking for your signs. And I was like, nope, I am not your meme girl. I am a wannabe meme girl. I am just a poor uh, apprentice to the expert, to the master uh, meme maker. But you were missed. You were missed. They they actually, I had quite a few people say, I was looking for your group this year. And I was like, oh, well, the group is just me. Sorry. <laughs> I think I was the only one that made a fight. Well, sign, but- you were... I was holding the fort, holding the fort. I want to go back and do it again. Oh, it's so so much, much I love doing that. And it's so much fun just to think of what's going on in pop culture yep. right now yep, that yep, people yep, would no. think was funny. So we've had, we've had <laughs> Salt Bay, we've had Miranda Sings, we've had Trump, Hamilton. Um, one of my favorites was Jack from <laughs> This Is Us. And it said, run like oh, you left a crop people pot still <laughs> talk about that in, in all the Facebook groups. They still talk about that. <laughs> They're like, the one that hurt the most. Yeah. Like, They're like, soon. the one that hurt the most was the sign of the crock pot. And I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, that was Diane. <laughs> We we had the catch me outside girl. We had yes. the catch me at, catch me at the finish line. How about that? And <laughs> we had her. That was the one. I, I I that one stands out to me because I didn't get it. Like when you were so you were laughing about it, and we're like, oh, we're going to totally have a sign with that girl. I was like, but it's so dumb. I don't get it. I don't get it. Oh, what is that? <laughs> I was so wrong because it was the most stopped for sign and picture of that race. Like nonstop, and it was all over my Facebook feed. People so excited about the cash cash. I was like, "Say, Diane just knows. I know nothing. I know I am John Stone. I know but nothing. Uh, Diane knows that's everything." That's what it helps <laughs> to have teenagers because they know everything, yes. and they send me the memes, and they send me the the vines and the YouTube videos. And so, it, my daughter Katie's the one that really sends me stuff. Like every day, she sends me Instagram videos <laughs> that are hysterical, and so. I get a lot from them. Like that's where I first heard of Salt Bay. I didn't know who Salt Bay was. <laughs> and so I had a sign that said, all it takes is faith, trust and Salt Bay dust and had a picture of him like doing the, the and if you haven't heard of Salt Bay, look it up. Look I it know up. people are like, what is she talking about? <laughs> nah, they, everyone's a fangirl here. They know, they know. And, and if you don't know, Google is your friend. You will find out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Diane. This has been so much fun. I hope everybody now kind of has an, understanding and appreciation for what being a fangirl can be all about. It's about making your life fun, right, Diane? That's right. Make it fun. Dream it, plan it, do it. (laughs) There you go. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Well, thanks for joining me on the No Guilt Fangirls podcast. I hope you'll come back to fangirl with us again soon. Thanks for having me.